All right, Diana Christen on Quora asked, what is the difference between Talmud, the Talmud and Midrash? So basically, the Talmud specifically means the commentary on the Mishnah. Really, the Mishnah isn't included in the Talmud, even those that do not have uh, the Babylonian or the Jerusalem Talmud attached them. So the Mishnah was redacted by uh, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who we call Rabbi or Rabbeinu HaKadosh, uh, just plain rabbi or our holy rabbi, and uh, Rabbi Judah the Prince, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. And that was around 200 of the common era. Uh, subsequently, and that was in the Holy Land. Subsequently, the uh, Jerusalem Talmud or the Palestinian Talmud Talmud Yerushalmi was around three to four hundred of the Common Era, commenting on the Mishnah. The Jerusalem Talmud is not very widely studied in the Jewish world, to be honest. It's uh, it, it, it's uh, kind of obscure, although more recently it has had somewhat of a renaissance with the art scroll translation being completed very recently of the Jerusalem Talmud. The generally when people say the Talmud, that means the Babylonian Talmud. Uh, the Babylonian Talmud was and now it should be known that the Jerusalem Talmud was not written in Jerusalem. It was written in the Galilee, generally in Sippori and other parts of the northern part of the Holy Land. Uh, the Babylonian Talmud, of course, was from Babylonia, and Ravina and Ravashi were the final redactors of the Babylonian Talmud, followed by the Rabban and Savarai, who did more redaction subsequently. But in any event, uh, as it is, the Mishnah is divided into six orders, or Sedarims, and each of those six have around an average of ten Mesechtots, or tractates. And uh, so they're general subjects, the six, the are zeroyim, which means seeds. The, there's a, in general, agricultural laws, but also includes uh, liturgical laws. The second is moed, which means season, appointed times, appointed season. And that is the holidays, the Sabbath and the holidays, and fast days and so forth. Third one is nashim, which means women, which is the laws of marriage and divorce, but also vows, including Nazarite vow. Then the next one, the fourth one, is Nazikin, which is damages or torts. So generally it's tort law, but also laws of capital and corporal punishment, as well as laws of idolatry and ethics, The next and, and the other general laws. The next Seder is Kodshim, holy things, sacred things, meaning the laws of the sacrifices, although it also includes the laws of kosher food. And the final one is taharos, or purities, which is the laws of purity, of Levitical purity. And the major distinction between the Babylonian and the Jerusalem Talmud is that in the Babylonian Talmud, the first Seder Zroyim only has one tractate, and that's brachos, that's the benedictions, the laws of blessings and liturgy. And all the rest of the tractates do not have a Babylonian Talmud because the agricultural laws did not apply outside of the Holy Land. However, the Jerusalem Talmud, the Yushalmi, includes uh, all of the tractates of Zroyim. Moed has almost all the tractates in both the, the Babylonian and the Jerusalem Talmud, with the exception of Shkalim, <coughs> which is only in the Jerusalem Talmud, but not in the Babylonian Talmud, or that has somewhat been included unofficially into the Babylonian canon, even though it is a Jerusalem Talmud piece. And some of the other, and, and Nushim has both uh, Babylonian and Yushalmi throughout, and the Zikin has some tractates that only have Mishnah, as is uh, the same with uh, Kodshim has both, but then Taharos has only, Nida is the only one that has either Bavli or Yushalmi, and all the rest of Taros is only Mishnayos and no Gemara. 
But so in, in any event, all of this together is the Talmud. The Mishnah, the Midrash, is other books that are not included in the Talmud. There are the Masechtus Katanos. There are somewhat apocryphal tractates of the Talmud, which are not considered Midrashim generally, although some of them might be. In general, the Midrash includes texts such as the Midrash Rabbah, which uh, has comments on the on the Pentateuch and certain other books of the Bible. So as opposed to the Talmud that's divided up into the six orders that go by subject matter, the Midrash is more of a running commentary of homilies on the scripture. And so to that's what Midrash means, homily. And so, in general, there are other books of Midrashim, which also generally go by scripture. There is what's called both Agadic Midrash and Halachic Midrash. And so, too, in the Babylonian Talmud, you have both Agadita and Halacha. Agadita means lore, L-O-R-E, and Halacha means law, L-A-W. But for the most part, Midrash is mostly Agadita, is mostly lore. And the Talmud is more of a mix, but it tends to have more law, L-A-W, halacha, than Agadita. There are those. There are books that divide up the Talmud into the Agadic and halachic portions. The Agadic, or lore, L-O-R-E portion, is in a, a book called Ein Yaakov, which they're working on making an art scroll version. But there was a classic version, the, the Legends of the Talmud. Uh, and then the law would be in the riff that would only have the legal aspects of the Talmud and not the homiletic uh, lore aspects, uh, agadic aspects in the, in the riff. Uh, but the mid, mid, Midrashim, there are many different Midrashim. If you go to safaria.com, it divides up. There's a section for Talmud and a section for Midrash. So uh, you can see there which texts are referred to as Talmud and which texts are referred to as Midrash. But all of them together are rabbinical literature. Although the redaction of the Midrashim tends to be somewhat later, even though the source materials are ancient, but nonetheless the text as we have them today uh, tend to be medieval in the redaction of when uh, we have them as we have them today. Uh, There are different versions and there are most likely texts of of Midrash that are missing, that are lost and might be found at some point in the future as opposed to the Talmud is pretty much uh, canonized and it's a set canon. Midrash Rabbah may be a set canon, and certain other Midrashim are accepted into the canon of unofficial, somewhat canon of Midrash. Um, but there, it's, it's a little bit of a different uh, type of text. And certainly there's much more authority to the Talmud than to the Midrash. If there is a Say, let's say there is a, so, not a disagreement, but a nuance that might have a legal uh, a, a ramification. We will go by, in general, the, the rulings of the Babylonian Talmud. And for, for sure, in general, if there's a disagreement between the Babylonian Talmud and the Jerusalem Talmud, the greater authorities in the Babylonian Talmud because it's uh, more recent and it is a larger text and so it it takes into consideration the earlier things as well. In general, earlier things have more authority in Judaism but in this case, as far as the Babylonian Talmud is concerned, that is, uh, the Babylonian Talmud is the more authoritative of the two Talmuds. And so too, however, even though the Midrashim may have been redacted later historically, the Midrash, the Babylonian Talmud has more authority than the Midrash. So again, if you find 
some nuance that is uh, where there might be the same teaching appears in both the Talmud and the Midrash, the Talmud will have 